Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here, playing more Kerbal Space Program. Uh, slightly bad news, Fraps crashed while I was recording and I lost the first few minutes of the recording. All I have is these couple uh, fairly nice screenshots of what I was doing around Minmus. But it doesn't really show you that much except for the, the crazy ship <laughs> I have planned. But so you're gonna, you missed a little bit of my planning ahead, but we are going to join the action as I am planning my maneuver node to get us from Minmus to Moho. To Mo Okay, I don't know how much of that was saved, because uh, all tabbing away from Kerbal Space Program while you're recording it uh, is apparently a bad idea. But anyway, Moho's orbit is about 12 and a half days, so this is going to take about maybe 10 days to get all the way around here, and that gives us three days and five hours to get back to Kerbin from Minmus, which uh, is plenty of time, to be honest. I, I don't know how, f how long it takes to get back. Um, actually, that's one of the things this probe's going to do. When he gets out of Minmus's sphere of influence, I am going to uh, do a couple experimental burns. I think ten, uh, three days is perfectly reasonable. Um, I know it takes like, bare minimum, it takes like four hours to get to Moon. So I can't believe it's going to take, it would take three days to get home from Minmus. And what we're going to do is, ideally, we're going to leave Minmus. We are going to swing around Kerbin, come out, fix our, fix our tilt of our orbit. So that it's set correctly. Then we're going to go back in and and time it so that you know, like we're going to burn at periapsis, to bring our apoapsis out to the point where the next periapsis will be exactly when we want to burn. Then when we get out to that apoapsis, we're going to fix our tilt so that all we have to do is burn prograde, and then boom, we're going to burn prograde, catapult ourselves out of the system, and everything will be perfect. That's what we call Plan A. <laughs> so we need to get up here so we can see the orbit. And then we need to time warp, and we can only time warp a thousand times, which is redonkulous. So, let's go to our probe. And... Also, he's going to be leaving the system here. Yeah, Moho Projector. His his job is to project our orbits to see, you know, he's he's there to test things. And uh, notice his, his orbit is too big out here, but that's not a big deal. Um, so... And, of course, he's going prograde, which is probably stupid. But what you going to do? So he has left Moho's sphere of influence. Moho. I don't know why I keep saying that. Now, if I were to burn a retrograde here... Actually, let's do it out here. Let's test it here. If we were to burn retrograde to bring ourselves way down... Okay, that's in that's 20 days, but that's 20 days from this node here, which is 23 days away. So it actually looks like it is about 3 days. So we got to do it all in one in one go, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Might be kind of fun. So um yeah, it looks like it looks like we're we're one shot. We have we have one shot to do this. We have to it's it's uh what is this? 23 days, 3 hours. And this periapsis is in the yeah close the alarm room. And this periapsis is in the worst spot, so I can't read it. Twenty days, fifteen hours. So that's three and a half hours, give or take. I'm sorry, three and a half days. So when our when our encounter here gets to four days away, we need to start really worrying about it. That's what it tells us. So let's go ahead and delete these maneuver nodes. Let's hit a five, <laughs> and uh, so four days away. We just need to crank up the time until we are until our moho window is four days away. Six, five, four, and slow it down. Okay, four and a half days. Um. Yeah, Midmus is here. Yeah, this is not going to be ideal, I don't think, which is sad. But we'll just have to deal with it. I mean, we'll we'll be coming around anyway, which is good enough. So, actually, let's get a better idea of what it'll be like if we do this. Because we want to be down at about 80 or so. With our Kerbin Periapsis. Yeah, 
Yeah. Somewhere around there is where we want to be. And so this maneuver node is eight days, five hours away. And this periapsis is 10 days, 13 hours away. So it looks like, what is this? 8, 5 to 10, 13. That's two and five hours. So two and a quarter. So that's actually much better. So so being out here, yeah, the farther away you are, the, the more important, the, the worse it is. So... We can actually go down to, to two and a half, I think, and then start getting ourselves out. I'm just cranking the time down so our moho window is two and a half days away. And I'm gonna I'm actually gonna quick save it three days. Or two days, 19 hours. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna quick save, because if I have to, I, I would rather restore from farther back, because what if it's what if this is already past the window? So you're not who I want. I don't care about your maneuver node here anymore. Uh, where's our moho people? So now I can start planning this thing. Moho, Kethane, all in one. Let's switch to him. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the maneuver node out so I can actually see exactly how far it's going to be. So I know exactly how much time to take. Uh, so we need a maneuver node around here somewhere. Where's our orbit around Kerbin? Yeah, that seems reasonable. Maybe a little bit farther. We don't want to muck with our apoapsis too much. It doesn't really matter where our apoapsis is. So two days, zero hours. And if we go even farther. Oh yeah, see it's much even less than that even. To get our periapsis down to 70, we're talking, or 90 we'll say, a day and 17 hours. So when that's a day and, uh, actually we can go another day. Another total day, which is perfect, actually. We're, this is actually looking really good. It's almost like I planned this. <laughs> so let's go ahead and delete this maneuver node. A day and... Actually, I'll, I'll get down to a day and 20. I'm going to hit a 5 here. I think it's safe. A day and 20 hours away. Okay, I've got it. Um, oddly enough, I have to burn north in order to uh, be going south because you have to swoop up and then back down. Um, and, uh, but I basically got it. Uh, it's again, it's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. I think, uh, I am thinking so much. I am hitting F five to save this location. Now we want to do this burn pretty freaking accurately. It's only 164 meters per second here. Uh, so I'm going to get myself aimed at this maneuver node. It is also, what is that? An hour away, give or take. Yeah, this ship is not very wieldy, and it's not going to be very wieldy throughout the entire trip. However, in testing, I was able to burn at four times speed. Uh, it's a little bit scary, and it started spinning, but it stayed together, <laughs> which is possibly important considering we have a uh, 23 minutes of burn time. So to go 164 meters per second, that's about what is that? Five percent of our fuel. It's uh, yeah, it's about half of 10% of our fuel. So 10% of our time is a little bit less than two and a half minutes, two minutes, 20 seconds. So half of that is going to be about a one minute and 10 second burn, give or take. Uh, I have no problem abusing the, the non-physics warp to, uh, Fix my to fix my rotation here because, like I said, this guy is very unwieldy. So, boop! Oh, magic! Let's turn the computer on here. And uh, yeah, let's see. We've got an hour, so we might as well do this now. I need to take all these things off this fuel tank and stick them on probably this guy because he's gonna eventually be the one who who wants them. They're, they're RCS tanks, RCS thrusters, and then the science modules. Um, I'm not going to make you guys sit through that, because that will be extremely boring. <laughs> uh, but I will uh, be back when that is done. done. 
Okay, well, I've got the science all set up. It's amazing we can get down to Minmus with five things of fuel, but moving four scientific instruments used up <laughs> one and a half units of, of fuel. It's just kind of crazy. I've got these three. I've got the, the dish over here. You'll notice I haven't touched the RCS, and there's a reason for that. Even though I am positive I tested this on the surface of Kerbin, uh, now when I try to grab these things... There's no option to grab them. I cannot grab them, and there must be three, because I thought for sure I I tried to grab one of these, the, the bigger ones, and it lit me. So we're going to do this mission sans RCS. That's just the way it's going to work. So Waffles is going to get back in. Thank you for uh, doing that job there, Waffles. <laughs> Luckily, I have Kerbal Alarm Clock, which kept that node there. So... Let's go ahead and speed up time until we actually get to our maneuver node. And what did I say? About a minute and 20 seconds, if I recall. So I'm going to hit F5 here. We are going to aim ourselves at our maneuver node. This crazy, crazy ship of ours. Yeah, it's just, it's like, <laughs> it's like my worst nightmares. It's like, I, I, I just keep adding things and I just keep adding them to a huge stack. Um, tell me, put in the comments, tell me I'm not the only one who does this kind of stuff. Uh, but this is, it's kind of cool though. This is like everything I do. This is, you know, I've got, I've got multiple landers. Um, and if you'll notice... They're on the, these are the radial decoupler, or the radial things, so that I could, I could stick them on here. But then I've got a decoupler actually here, so once I send the ship down, I could actually kick this off. And it's got a docking port on it, so I can, I can deorbit it, so I don't have, I don't leave orbital debris. I never want to leave anything in orbit around anything, that's my goal. So, so, not only is it cool, it's, uh, environmentally conscious as well. Okay, I'm hitting F5. I'm assuming it's a minute and 20 is the burn, so I'm going to go down to 40 seconds. And Kerbin should be in the sky. There he is. She, I should say. So at 40 seconds, let's just go at 41. I was off by a little bit. I... I'm going to do the burn and see. But it is very possible that I am going to scrub this and call this a test burn and then do it again because... Actually, wait, a minute and 40 is... is no, I did for a minute and 20. A minute and 40 would be 50 seconds? Why does that sound wrong to me? But we'll see. We'll see how good... One day, 23 hours and 13 minutes... One day, 23 hours, and 13 minutes. And of course, that has deleted the node from Kerbal Alarm Clock, which sucks. <laughs> One day, 23 hours, and 13 minutes is the only thing I care about. Actually, it's probably going to be 12 minutes by the time we get down there. One day, 23 hours, and 12 minutes. And come on, give me my periapsis back. One day, 23 hours, and 12 minutes. We do have RCS right now to fix the orbit, which is probably a really good thing to do. One day, 23 hours, and 12 minutes. Here we go. There. Okay, let's turn RCS on, and there we go. It's 22 hours and 52 minutes, though, to the thing. But we can't really bring our periapsis down any farther. And if we set Moon as a target, we will see 9.9, .9, which is horrible. Okay, we're going to fix that when we get out there. Okay, we're going we're gonna to count this as the, the real burn. It's not perfect. But this is Kerbal Space Program. When is anything perfect? Um, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and we might as well use the RCS while we have it. We can we can do all of our turning with it and everything. So I'm just gonna 
Let's watch Minmus go. Thank you, Minmus, for your gravity assist there and all your fuel. We are no longer in your sphere of influence. We are now in Mother Kerbin's sphere of influence, which means we can plan this maneuver here. Uh, we want this to be 12.2. 12.2, that works for me. Um, and that's going to change our periapsis probably in a tiny, tiny amount. As long as it does not cause our periapsis to go below 70. And it doesn't. Uh, where's our... Yeah. I think it actually raised it a little bit. Um, okay, we're going to call this good. Actually, just eyeball this thing where... Oh, we've already passed it, so we definitely want to burn now. 12.2. There we go. 12.2. Perfect. And we still have a periapsis. It's in one day, four hours, and four minutes. Yeah, we're, we're off by about 20 minutes. I think we'll survive. <laughs> okay, but now for the important part. And that is... Ah. That is double-clicking the wrong thing and then having to go back. And I love that you double-click that and it... And it will send you to some random object, but you double click here and it doesn't send you back. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch to him. Now, from this periapsis, we should be able to burn straight ahead somewhere in the vicinity. Now, this, this says it's supposed to be... Uh, and it's not going to be right at periapsis, but... I'm just putting it there for now. It says it's going to be, um, yeah, because 97%. So it's actually, we're going to be over here a bit, probably right around here somewhere. We'll still get most of the old birth effect. Uh, but it is a, what's the burn time? Ejection Delta V 2282. But we've got about a thousand of it already. So it's going to be about 1282, uh, give or take. 1200 or so. And the important thing is this periapsis, though. We want to burn so that this periapsis is the lowest possible. That's the sweet spot. So, good thing the sun is right there. <laughs> Uh, seriously, sun periapsis, I cannot read that, 4.8, 4.7, 4 4.6, yeah, right around here, 4.37, that's about the best we can do, and, I, and that's actually really good, because it's really close. So now we just need to set Moho as our target. And then we need to add a little bit of prograde here to bring ourselves down. Uh, we can probably do it by tens. And show us that encounter. There it is. Very, very close. Very close. Um, we just need to tweak now. And I have no idea what tweaking to do. Well, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you go while I fiddle. Um, you've seen what I'm doing. I'm just basically trying to find um, a location where these orbits match. Um, it can get kind of boring, so I'm not going to make you sit through it. But uh, when I get it, I will come back and tell you. Okay, well, this is the best I can do. Um, if I if I go one way, it moves these things farther apart. If I go the other way, they vanish off the face of the Earth, and it's kind of annoying. Um, I know that Kerbal Space Program does this sometimes, and I just don't know what to do about it. So we're just gonna do that with the uh, with the burn. We're just gonna have the burn be that way, <laughs> and uh, we're going to turn on our RCS here. Might as well use it. Get ourselves turned in the right direction um it is a fairly big burn 1367 uh it's far less than half of our fuel but it looks like it's going to be probably about a 10 minute burn which is 
a little bit crazy. So when we're five minutes out, I need, I need to actually change this alert so it's five minutes away. Um, we're going to start the burn and we're just going to do the whole thing. I mean, we got to do it in one go. That's the way this that's the way this game works. Um, and the thing is, is I'm eventually want to throw this fuel tank away. Uh, but we can't throw it away until we have uh, taken those science things off the top of it. Which we can't do while we're burning and I don't want to do it now. I think it's better to use this fuel to eject us out than it is to... Uh, than it is, and actually I want to... I had it set up in one of my testing. I was doing TAC Fuel Balancer. But I just realized I think it's this guy. Let's highlight him. No. Is it this guy? Yeah, that's the one. So we want to transfer out of him. And then Oxidizer, we want to transfer that out as well. Yeah, so... He's still got too much fuel in him. But that'll at least get rid of most of it. I should have RCS on because I'm... Don't need it for anything else. Like, as soon as this guy's gone, I'm never going to be using RCS again. Obviously, because he has the RCS tanks on him. He's definitely not worth it just for RCS tanks. Okay, so I need to change this guy to be an alarm. Uh, let's make it six minutes ahead. And did that keep? Yes, it did. Okay. So I'm going to hit a five here. <laughs> and we are going to come on down to Kerbin. It went to three minutes. Damn it. And, of course, the, the maneuver node alarm's gone, and I've lost the maneuver node. Oh, well, I didn't spend a lot of time on that thing. Okay, I'll be back. Well, as the fates would have it, uh, in my remaking of the node, guess what? We got an encounter. <laughs> a not great encounter, but we can tweak that as we uh, as we get out there. But we have an encounter with Moho if we do this burn exactly this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new maneuver node alarm for six minutes in front of this thing. And I am going to... The option isn't there, but when the time comes, I am not going to delete this alarm. And the reason being, I don't want uh, to ever lose this maneuver node again. <laughs> now that I have one, especially one that, that works, uh, that, that gets me there. So I still think it's going to be about a, uh, what did I say, about a 10-minute burn. So we are going to hit F5 again. And, yeah, that's one of the things, the uh, the Kerbal Alarm Clock stuff isn't saved in the persistence file. It's saved in its own little file. So when you delete the alarm, it's deleted forever. But, okay, let's cruise up to Kerb in here. Whoa. Ah, the Jewel of the Night. Everybody's favorite planet. Oh, maybe not everybody's. So, now when we are five minutes away, I'm going to start this burn. Probably going to cheat it a little bit prograde. Towards the prograde. Let's say halfway between the two. And let's just crank it down to five minutes. I was gonna quick save, but I decided I don't want to. Two, one, and go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I closed that alarm and unpaused. Uh, I'm gonna hit quick or uh, restore from quick save. That other alarm will still be there, which is nice. There. Now I can restore it. <laughs> now I can add a new alarm. And it's obviously I need it. I need to do it at about five and a half minutes because it was eleven and change. Uh, so we're going to add the alarm for six minutes again. Let's 
crank time all the way up here. And at five and a half minutes, we will do this burn. It's actually even a, a slightly smaller burn than the last one, which is funny. Kerbin, the jewel of the night, everyone's favorite planet. <laughs> okay, so close this alarm. And now at five and a half minutes, I'm again going to cheat a little bit here. And I think 35 will be good. And we're on our way. I'm actually gonna, because I was a little bit off, I'm gonna thrust with my RCS. <laughs> oh, that's cool. RCS actually cuts a full minute off. Of the burn. But the ship's kind of wobbly, so I'm not going to do this too much. I'm going to actually turn the RCS off so I can just fix it with the thrust vectoring on the engines and pod torque. But this is going to be a long burn, obviously. I'm not 100% sure I want to do too much physics warping. I think I'm just going to chill out here and watch it for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm just uh, bringing you back here during the burn. It's just, it's first of all, it's awesome looking. Look at that. <laughs> You can't get better. Uh, secondly, I was looking at the fuel in here, and this tank is actually going to get us most of the burn here, which is awesome. That means basically one, we have the, the three fuel tanks that gave us like 30-some thousand Delta V, and it's actually looking like 37, uh, is going to, we're going to have all that to get to Moho, get in orbit, and do everything we want to do there. So we're not going to be have any problem as far as Delta V is concerned, which is awesome. And because we're almost done with this burn, we're not going to be carrying this fuel tank very long. Um, as soon as uh, as soon as we get this thing down, we can then decouple this, decouple this. Actually, we got to decouple this first. <laughs> then decouple this, and uh, then we can attach our ship to these guys, and then ride them out of the uh, Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Um, I'm at two times acceleration. I don't know if I said that earlier, but. Uh, That seems to be going okay for us. I'm basically now just bringing my uh, orbit down. Let's see, where is it? Here's here's what I have, here's what I want. And ideally, this is gonna come down and we're gonna, we're gonna this periapsis is gonna touch this periapsis and we're gonna get a magical moho encounter right around here somewhere. If not, I'm sure we can fudge it mid course correction. But with any luck, we won't have to. We do maneuver nodes so we don't have to do a dead stick maneuver. But one of the keys is to be very accurate as far as where we're burning. Which means keeping this thing centered right here. Okay, I just finished my burn. I'm going to do the rest of this with RCS. Look how close we are. So I'm going to turn RCS on, and I think if I just go forward a little bit. Oh, wow. I'm actually using my engines here. <laughs> yeah, it's actually getting worse. So, I want to use my RCS to go down a little bit. <laughs> using up that RCS before I don't need it anymore. Or before I can't use it anymore, I should say. Actually, this I can definitely do at multiple... Four times speed RCS <laughs> motion here. Uh, yeah, if we just keep slowing down. Looks like I overshot slightly. Come on, show us that beautiful bean footage. And it's gone, which is super annoying. Um, I'm going to wait till we're outside of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. We're obviously really close. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't just destroy my ship, did I? No. It's just super wobbly. Okay, we're all fine here, thanks. Don't worry. No problems. 
I think we got to leave Curb and Sphere of Influence so we're, so we're not doing two things at once. But in the meantime now, we can actually do... Oh, look at that. Curb and Space Center. It's it, don't, night. They're all cheering. They're probably heading out to the bar because they're just so happy. Okay, I'm turning off RCS. Uh, I'm going to disconnect this guy. Yes. <laughs> Now I'm going to, actually, let's back up with the RCS. Might as well use it. And then we've already done that. So let's go ahead and disconnect here. Or not. Yeah, we're fine. Undock. There we go. No more RCS. Now let's set this as our target. And let's control from here. Now let's... Oh, I got used to using RCS. <laughs> yeah, these are the docking maneuvers that aren't too bad. I think I, I actually screwed it up. I was... I don't know what I was thinking. We need to get our direction vector aimed at the port. And I gotta do it really slow. But the good news is, is we're not in orbit anymore, so basically everything's moving in a straight line. We're not in, we're not in as much curved space as uh, we're used to when we're in orbit. Ugh. Okay, that should be good enough. Oh god, we're just gonna get it. Nope, we bumped it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this ship, ship is just so crazy to control. I almost want to get a Kerbal out there to bump that thing back into shape. Uh, let's try it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, waffles, you're you're on the top. I know that because you're the one who did the other thing. The other th I'm not going to use you to dock. I'm just going to use you to aim it at the ship. And then we'll go into physics mode. To freeze it in place there. Imagine if NASA did things this way. Oh, I think I should have frozen time right there. That is nowhere near what I want. <laughs> but at least it's standing still now. Okay, now you stay you stay there. Waffles, we'll we'll get you in a second. Control from here. We still have our target. We're just going to aim at it, and thrust. Oh! I can't, I can't avoid it. Oh, I was hitting the wrong key. <laughs> okay. Probably far too fast. And way offline. But through the magic of magnetism. Still no? Damn it all. <laughs> oh, I've done this so many times with slightly lighter craft. Now, the last thing I want to do is screw up my solar panels on my probes. Okay. Well, you've seen the failed attempts here. Uh, I'm going to do this off camera because the last thing I want is this episode to be... 40 minutes of me trying to dock with this thing. I'm going to do that off camera, and I will be back when I have it. Okay, I got it. Whew. Um, it actually wasn't as bad as, as it was. Um, one trick, and I, I, I wish I had shown it to you, is um, get yourself lined up, then hit F5. 
and then you can take as many tries as you want at it, learning from the experience as you go. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I don't know if we actually, I'm pretty sure we do have one high above Kerbin. Yeah, we do. So let's not, let's not use that experiment. What we're going to do here now is we are going to ride this guy out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. Oh, get a stable orbit around the sun. Good job. We have achieved something. Okay, now, the first thing we're going to do is observe the materials bay. See what they have to say here. Oh, 275. Keep it. And observe the mystery goo. Going to keep that. And uh, now... Let's see, Waffles, it seems to be your job to do all this busy work. Uh, yeah, we don't care about that. Let's go ahead and let go. You're going to go out there, collect those experiments, and then we're going to dump that. And we're just going to remember that we're keeping the experiments in the space station part of it. Collect the data. Yeah, I know. It'll make it inoperative. Uh, come on. Collect the data. Yes. Okay. Now get back in your ship. Okay, now we should have... If we review stored data, we're going to have a goo observation worth 110 and a science bay worth 275. Sadly, we're not going to transmit either of these, so it's going to take a long time before we get these. Eventually, we're going to send a ship back. Uh, let's go ahead and keep and keep those. And now we don't need this guy anymore, so we're going to dump him. Bye-bye. <laughs> send him off into interplanetary space. And now we need to fix our orbit so that we actually get a Moho encounter. I can only assume it's going to be very simple to do. Um, basically, I don't know what I need to do. So, I think our apoapsis is a perfect time to do that thing. Actually, no, this is, what is this, two days away? Yes, yeah, so we are heading this way. Okay. So let's fiddle and see if, uh, no? Okay, let's try going this way. There we go. There's the magic. Yeah, see, like, right as it gets close, <laughs> it goes away. So let's try radial now. Uh, yeah, at one, I think, is fine. Radial minus will seem to go away. So radial plus. Boom! Encounter! Easy as pie. See, what's hard to do when you're when you're dealing with multiple spheres of influence and stuff like that, it's really easy when it's just you. Okay, now we want to go radial plus. And it looks like we might want to go normal minus. That looks pretty damn perfect to me, to be honest. I do not think I can do it better. I don't even think I can do it this way. But I can try. Okay, so let's get ourselves aimed at this maneuver node. It's only a 12 second burn and it's in two days. And, oh, just get yourself aimed right there. Turn the computer back on. I had it off for the docking. Okay, so let's crank up our time. 12 meters per second, looks like five second burn. Let's get uh, Kerbal Engineer back up there. Yeah, we've got tons of Delta V. Tons, I say. Three minutes isn't going to matter. A hill of beans in this universe. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I think I'm just going to do the burn here. And I want to watch... First of all, I want to watch my orbit. And then as soon as I... Actually, I think I'm just going to watch Moho. Oh, I just... There it is. 
There's that beautiful bean footage. Get ourselves turned a little bit. Okay. I'm going to call that good. I really I really don't care enough uh, to send the very best. <laughs> Can you tell I watched a lot of TV and movies as a kid? Um, there we go. Actually, I still do. Okay. So let's see what let's see what it's going to take to actually slow us down. It should be about a grand or so. He says, okay. 1673 so that's another one of those 10 minute burns which is going to be freaking crazy um but there's nothing i can do about it yeah 11 minutes and 20 seconds that is nuts that's half of our delta v and it's going to take a long time so we're going to have to like like this is 28 days one hour 58 minutes yeah we're going to have to start around here yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. I mean, all we need to do is get an orbit. That's all that matters. Um, so I think we're gonna I think we're gonna call that good. So, well, we have achieved what we wanted to this episode. I am happy with it. I am gonna consider this a successful mission. And you know what that means? That means, oh, that means I hit the wrong key. That means we can get to go to the space center. And unlock a node! I think I'm gonna unlock this. I kinda feel bad sending these guys in those little cans, to be honest. I might, I might, when I send the replacement crew, they're probably gonna get these. So I think I'm gonna unlock this guy. I'll just go ahead and research it. We've got plenty of science. And that, that'll give us the chance to get orange fuel tanks and the bigger cathane unit, which is, which is kinda nice, because my current cathane unit didn't really work very well. Okay, well, Next episode, I don't even know what we're going to be doing next episode. What do we got? We've got um, 17 days to the Kerbin Elu transfer, which basically means we've kind of missed it as far as uh, as far as doing all the Minma stuff is concerned. And we've already sent a probe there, so there's not much else we can do except for except for maybe try to get a lander up there. Um, I might do that. I think possibly we'll launch that next episode. Um, just from Kerbin. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you're excited as I am about uh, getting getting actually the plan that we have <laughs> in action 70 almost episodes later. Uh, or actually possibly exactly 70 episodes later. I am Fifth Horseman, though. <laughs> and I will, as always, talk at you later. Do